Okay, guys. Well, this is not a fun story. It sort of is, but it's also not. So it's not terrible. It's it's difficult to talk about. Difficult it, to I, talk about, but yeah, so positive that, ending, sort of, kind of. Kind I mean, of, but it's, it's not mixed. good. It's mixed, guys. That's what I mean to say. It's mixed. Okay. So uh, this has been something that has, you know, been talked about in the background, and just it's one of those things that's very sad that's been happening across America that isn't really addressed, and it's very hard to address it because most of the time it's not even reported on, so we can't even report it. And when it is happening... We don't really have a lot that we could say on it. In this case, we do. So missing black girls found after cops don't issue Amber Alert. So a pair of black girls were missing in Milwaukee, uh, were found by a search party of residents who banded together. Maybe another sign that maybe community policing is sort of useful, and it's like, you know. Um, after police decided against issuing child abduction alerts for them, according to reports across social media, reports from local media, it's, and by the way, I want to point out again, because I want to point out when the media does something right. I've seen a pretty consistent change in the tone with the media and police. I don't see a whole lot of, yeah, when the police said something, that's the truth. That's exactly what we're going to report verbatim. I see a lot more both sides, which I really appreciate. I really want to shout out to the media when they do something right. So anyway. Uh, it's unfolding all against a backdrop of an alleged uh, child sex trafficking ring that the girls' relatives suspect that they could have been taken to be a part of. The girls first went missing on Sunday, but Milwaukee Journal Sentinel reported that a police spokesman said that the 13- and 15-year-old girls' cases, quote, had, had been not been considered critical missing and did not meet the criteria for an Amber Alert. Which, you know... You know what does that even mean? It, it, what they're basically saying is what we've been saying, that they basically, oh, they're just out somewhere, stop complaining, they're going to come back. They're not basically they're not worthy enough when we know that the first 48 hours are the most important. And if you have a cop that's saying, I'm not going to do an Amber Alert, no one's going to look for you, well, there goes a lot of eyes in that first 48 hours. So a local uh, photographer identified as uh, Amanda uh, Schlichter, uh, press offered her own account of the case, um, which culminated in a reported safe rescue of the girls on Tuesday night. She painted a picture of racist policing that worked to serve a particular self-serving agenda. Press said one of the girl, missing girls' mothers tracked her daughter's phone to a house and alerted to police about it. They never showed up. This is the policing we spend our money on. Don't even show up. That prompted a search party of civilians to get to work. Quote, a group of neighbors showed up at the house to knock on the door and look for the girls. And when they did, shots were fired at them from the inside. It's amazing. They didn't have guns. They didn't have anything like the police did. And they, it looks like they, yeah, they could handle it, apparently. Oh my God. Then police showed up and arrested people who were shooting within the house, but claimed they did not see any evidence of girls there and left the scene. Wonderful. This is what we spend our money on. She later added the house is connected with known sexual predator, a known sexual predator, and it was suspected the girls had been lured or grabbed for sex trafficking. The community activist Vaughn L. Mays recorded several videos on t from Tuesday and streamed it live on Facebook in conjunction with the Missing Person MKE account, a social media network that was created in February because, quote, because there is a clear bias and selective culture practice when it comes to issuing timely Amber Alerts. There you have it. Go back to those Milwaukee police and missing persons reports in Milwaukee for people of color after the house was set on fire. And they don't know exactly how that happened, but it got set on fire. A search party of neighbors, not the police, found the two missing girls that the police were like, oh, there's no one here except these two missing girls in a house that will eventually be on fire. Um, they followed up neighbors tips from house to house that appear to be straight sex trafficking ring. Uh, there were dozens. So when this happened, so the house is on fire, they, they, they go in, they get these girls, they rescue them, they do the job that the police said didn't actually exist in the first place because there's no need to do an Amber Alert. And when they went to arrest the people shooting, didn't even bother searching because apparently they were in there and they didn't look. Um, so when the police came, uh, they actually thanked the residents and said, you know, this is really good, I'm really glad. Oh, I'm just kidding. They fired tear gas at them and started shooting rubber bullets at them for doing the job that they didn't do. Uh, the press wrote, and again, I'm very happy the press are starting to go, oh, maybe we shouldn't believe the police when they say anything. That's a reasonable thing. Anyway, the police chief um, condemned the residents for taking it upon themselves to serve justice in the community and called it vigilantism in an unruly crowd. All right, I got to comment. There you have I, it. I, I got to comment on this. All right, so first, all right, I am happy that those kids, that those two girls were found. On the other hand, too, how dare the police condemn the community 
for doing the right thing. A community found out that two of its children are missing. So what did the community do? They stepped up where the police failed. The police were just there. They didn't do anything. They didn't look. They didn't step up. Those officers failed. I don't want to hear this crap. Oh, well, they, they, they help out the community. It goes back to these protests that I covered, especially that recent protest in front of Cook County where there was a representative from uh, Black Lives uh, Matter Chicago where, where uh, the speaker was saying, not once I've heard anyone in my community what makes you feel safe and people saying CPD. No one's saying that. And now this is becoming more and more prevalent. Everyone is seeing just how incompetent or how corrupt or how uncaring the police are. And yeah, there's all these little happy-go-lucky videos of police hugging protesters. Don't show me that bullshit. Do your work. Two children nearly could have died or, had their, or could have been dramatically scarred. They probably are scarred right now uh, due to this horrible trauma they had to go through. The community didn't do anything wrong. They should not be condemned. In fact, the community should be screaming at the police for saying, how dare you yell at us for taking up the responsibility that they are supposed to do, in theory. In theory. Now, here's the thing. If you compare our police to police uh, overseas, I'm not saying there's no such thing as a perfect government because there isn't, but it's almost like night and day, almost. And that's how sad it is in this country. You know, even again, when we started Hard Lens Media, I still remember that story that we did when we went to the exon exoneration project where we saw 16 black men be exonerated for crimes that they did not commit because four police officers from Chicago were putting false evidence and false charges on them. This is horrible. And now corporate media is seeing it. Now the media is seeing it. It's not funny anymore. It's not a joke anymore. People are dying. People are missing because of the incompetence of our city, state governments. Now more than ever, we must step up. And here's the thing. It's the communities now that must do it. We as citizens. I think for a long time we've all been in our own little bubbles afraid to speak to one another. But the only way we're going to get out of this crisis, not only this COVID-19, but this economic depression, but also this unstable nightmare that we are in, is by working together and doing the job that our governments fail to do. It's in us. Don't wait for these politicians to be the knight on the hill. You are the knight on the hill. All right. Say what you want about the founding fathers, right? They're whatever they they didn't create a perfect system, but they did have uh, sort of the wherewithal to understand that a system couldn't exist in the in a static format forever, right? The system was built so that the people could buck up against it, and the uh, the ultimate lie I think that uh, the government and media and all of that in conjunction has really given us right is it's made us feel like oh you don't need to worry about that there doesn't need to be an uprising you don't need to buck up against us because we're going to take care of you and for the longest time we didn't have to worry about COVID-19 or a lot of we didn't have to see visibly sort of the issues that exist today right so of course we're going to be sort of flying blind and then suddenly because the media starts getting attacked, right, in these protests, and because now the narrative has shifted, and now it can't just be, oh, the police are fine, the government's fine, everything's cool, we just don't have to worry about it. Now it's like, oh, okay, maybe this is a problem. So revolt, right? We need to, yeah. we need to be up in arms. We need to be screaming because it's the only thing that we have left. It's the voice that the founding fathers, as much as you want to call that argument, it's the voice that they gave us originally. Yeah, yeah, and again, it's like, I mean, wouldn't it have been nice if the story ended with the police getting to the house and going, God damn, you guys were right. We fucked up on multiple occasions. How about we were wrong Daniel? about the Amber Alert story. Yeah. We were, when we went to the house to arrest those guys, we didn't even look and we said we did. You know what? The officers that were involved in this entire process, they're going to be harshly uh, penalized because they almost let a sexual uh, slave ring operate. Yeah. But again, it's America, so they shoot you. So you know, the fast how about, turnaround how about, time? How about, how about this alternative scenario? Again, an alternative scenario, probably we're not going to see it in our lifetime, but can you imagine this scenario? The citizens calling the police for help. The police hear that there are two children missing. They do everything in their power to lock down the area, find out where these kids are at. They find them. They go in there. They rescue the kids. They thank the community for informing them, and they swear to the it's community that this will never happen again, and they double their efforts to making sure that the kids have a safe place to go to school. Wouldn't that be a nice world to live well, actually, in? Actually, you're talking about just regular suburbia when you say that. So, uh, uh, again, it's selective. Uh, mm -hmm. 
My bad. Sure. When when little 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 Miss um, yeah generic white suburban lady calls to say her kids are missing, you know an Amber Alert is on every milk carton in five seconds. Yeah. Thank you.